Uh, you mentioned Greg Berhalter. He made four changes at the half. Uh, McKenzie, Cannon, Sergeant Morris all came on. Do you think that was, and I think maybe actually from his post-game comments, it tells us what he was thinking. I thought that might have been like, hey, there's four new guys that I want to get a look at. I want to do some more evaluation. I actually now think when he talked about personality, he was sending a message to everybody. Absolutely. Right? If, you, if you're not, not going to come for these 45 minutes, you will get pulled. There won't be a second chance. And I think some of those guys that got pulled are probably looking at this game saying, man, did my chance to either make the World Cup squad or have a certain role at the World Cup just go out the window? If you're one of those four guys that got pulled at the half, you're not feeling great. You're not feeling great at all. Um, it's a penultimate when, game. When I mean, this is the players, second to last chance Berhalter has. We, to we will talk guys. about this a little more in depth. But when certain players move up the depth mm -hmm. chart or get locked in, and they're not even part of the camp, right. that tells you a lot. That tells you about the performance you saw. It was as lackluster of a first half as I've seen from Greg Berhalter in all his tenure, tenure with the U.S. Men's National Team. Last time I saw a U.S. Men's National Team team that played this way was a 3-0 three, three loss to Mexico in New Jersey. Hmm. Literally, when I, when I thought they were just played off the pitch. You could say Costa Rica in the last game, but that may have been circ circumstantial. Uh, but the last time I truly felt like this was that 3-0 loss. All right, so real quick here. It's the second to last match before the World Cup, but it's also two months until the World Cup. So given that performance, days, right? yes, given that performance on a scale of 1 to 10, how worried are you about the U.S. and Qatar? One to ten? Six, because I think my... Ten being the worst. So right. you're, you're, my expectations yeah. for the U.S. men's national team are a little bit more tame than, than most fans, okay. I would say. Um, you certainly thought they would do better than a 2 nothing defeat against Japan on neutral ground, right? Of course. Yeah. Of course. They got bullied by Japan. Yeah. On neutral ground. Yeah. On neutral ground. But also, what are they? One win in the last ten away from home? Yep. That tells you a lot, right? Uh, zero wins. Doesn't I mean a lot of that is kind of qualifying oh, they record. Won against Honduras. But, but what I will say is, and I repeat, the complexion of this team changes yeah. a lot more. Yeah. When you got guys like Anthony Robinson, Chris Richards, or you got Eunice Musa on the field, when you got Timothy Weah, mm -hmm. who's I mean getting locked in without even playing. Right. Proving how how explosive and how vital he can be to this US men's national team, US men's national team team without even playing, Seb. Yeah. So the complexion can be very different. Uh, with a lot of these players on the field. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.